All right, by fun happenstance and random chance, I already have this really weird combination of just two images here where the nose of one becomes the eye of the other, right? When you're looking at line art carefully, you can kind of see the qualities of it. What else might I want to play with? I think I want to get rid of the uh, the cleat. Uh, well, let's get rid of the the cat head where it overlaps with this soccer cleat. So what I'll do is use my lasso. Make sure you know what layer you're affecting. I can zoom in on it with Command Plus and then use Spacebar to zoom to where it is. And then I'm just going to use my lasso and kind of travel along the black line of the cleat. But this time I'm not erasing the shoe. I'm erasing the layer on top of it. So when I hit delete, that's what goes away. I don't need to be perfectionist again. It's okay if things are a little bit off like it is there like it is there, but this is how you would clean it up. Now, when you zoom in, you can actually see the pixels and you can see how there's some grime there, some softness, some grays rather than solid black. So how can I clean up my sources so they're all really clean? Well, to show you that, it'd be easier to use the, uh, the one from Andy Warhol. So I'm going to bring that one in. Just like the others, I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to rotate it. This is a pop art silk screen. I'm going to flip it. And it's a good idea not to use text in these so that you're not limited to the text being readable. And text, whether it's readable or not readable, is usually a really strong focal point that we don't want to deal with aesthetically until we design our own text and our own type. So if I put it in like this, notice that the background is not white and that some of the line art is not clean and black. And of course, I have to rasterize it before I can delete, like the words here. It will warn me if I don't, so I'm going to rasterize it first. Then get rid of those. But before I click multiply and change its blending mode so I see the other layers, let me clean this one up. So if you have stuff that doesn't look purely black and white, zoom in on it and then go to, make sure it's rasterized, go to image adjustments. This is also if you want to thicken the line, the lines that you have. We're going to use three adjustments in this class over and over and over again. There are more, but these are the three that I think are the most personally valuable at any given time. And we will almost always use them in this order. The first is levels. Levels is the only one we're going to use today. The other two have to do with color. Levels has to do with lightness and darkness. You can think of it as brightness, contrast, but it's more than that. So levels gives you what's called a histogram. This is a histogram. Because this is a black and white image, we expect peaks at the black side, peaks at the white side, flat in between. Notice that this has not peaks at the sides, but a little bit of range and then a peak. That's because it's gray and then like 80% black. <laughs> to make it black black, I move this black square slider to the peak. That means that the darkest dark will be where the most pixels are. Then the same thing for the white slider. Move it to the peak. And now, what was gray is now white. Simple enough. If I want to thicken the lines, I can keep pushing that black further and further. So even the darkest gray becomes pretty much black. And then I can also put the white right there on it. It's not generally a good idea to overlap them like that because that then allows you to only have black pixels and white pixels. And this is what's called a bitmap. And then there is some digital noise that has happened with that, with these bright yellow. So instead of that, we're just going to goose them a little bit. 
So I'm going to say reset. That's what it started like. And I'm just going to darken the blacks a little bit and then brighten the whites just to the inside of these peaks. So I'm sure I have solid white and solid black. Then the rest of it will be good to use. And then I say OK. So that's using image adjustment levels. Now I can change it to multiply mode. And I can decide what I want to erase. And I can even just be kind of arbitrary at this point. And maybe I want to erase just a random squiggle of it, like this. And then maybe I want to erase a little bit of this, because that's a lot on that layer. And then maybe I want to erase this part, even though this line art is so beautiful. Erase that kneecap. <laughs> we can be merciless. OK, now I have three references. I need five. So let me bring in another big, bold one. This is from Pixabay. You'll notice that this one is different. This does not have any white pixels. Because this was also a vector image, basically a logo image that I could use. So it's already super clean, super big, and has no, it's just what's called a black, black shape vector. So I'm going to line that up in some interesting places. I love that ear. And then I'm going to delete heavily from it after I rasterize it. Go for the eyeballs. Take a big chunk out of the middle. Take a big chunk out of here. Take a chunk here. Here's another technique I really like, especially because I have so much black space with these. As I'm turning on my layers, I can go back to one that has contained shapes, like this t-shirt. It's almost contained. It's a little bit open there, but it's contained there. So if I use the next selection tool down, which is the magic wand tool, and I use contiguous as its setting, on this layer, I can click the white pixels that are inside the shirt here. And because they're trapped in that shirt, it will contain to that. And then because selections are not limited to the layer that you get them from, I can move that selection to the other layers and delete it out just of that area so that that shape inside the shirt is always clean. And that could be a fun way to edit out. So you'll see that shirt is always clean through all the layers. Let's see. Let's get rid of the big cat stuff here. Yeah, just kind of making a composition. Okay, I need one more. Let's try this. Is it? Nope, that's not it. Let's try the line art one. Okay, so this one is a pencil sketch, right? So first I want to place it. I'll just kind of stretch it. Remember, there's no necessary orientation, so maybe I flip it upside down. Stretch it bigger. Decide what I want to use. I can warp it. Maybe I can hook this in and on. Felix the Cat is an early 20th century animation style. It's a lot like Cuphead. It's all hand drawn. But what if I want to make this look like black line art that holds up to the rest? Well, first I have to rasterize it. Double right click on the uh, the layer go to rasterize once that black square is gone now I can go to image adjustments levels and this time I'm really gonna push the black and then up the white so it's not gonna make perfectly clean lines but it will make 
dark black lines. And then if I have gray there, you see the green, because this was a color file, I can also go to image, adjustment, hue saturation, which is one of the other adjustments we're going to use. And with that, I can take all the saturation out. So it's just grayscale. Now I can change that to multiply mode and start deleting from it. Here is a, a navigation trick that's very helpful in Photoshop because it can be difficult sometimes to see what you're doing in Photopea. To zoom in is command plus, to zoom out is command minus, to fit it all on, all on the, the working space is command zero. So those are all nicely in the same place. But sometimes when you hit command plus, this happens. Your image doesn't get better, but all the tools and things get better. That's because you're zooming in on the browser rather than on the tool. So this is how you adjust that. It's also how you can make your tools within Photo, Photo Lab or Photopea a little bit smaller, right? So in Chrome, when you're zooming on the browser, it will show you this, the 100%, the minus, the plus. That's zooming the browser window, and that's going to increase the size of your tools. If you click within the working space of PhotoP and do Command Plus and Command Minus, it will just zoom in on your artwork. Does that make work make some sense? So you can only make selections from a layer that you have selected. So what you're doing is make sure that your layer is high lit because you're trying to select where there are no pixels. All right, at this point, I've got five layers in there. One, two, three, four, five. Now it's about making it into something I like, which is really kind of the whole challenge. And you might not get there with this assignment within the deadline, right? But as long as you have composited five sources together, then you're in good shape. But I can do some basic cleaning. So what's not great about this? There are things cut off the edge. There's a lot of content that's still recognizable. So let me just use my lasso, get in there, and erase a lot of that stuff. And you, I find it helpful to turn off other layers, just the eyeball, as I'm cleaning. If I know there's stuff I don't want to use, like the words or things that are cropped off or borders around things or straight lines. You don't need to be worried about cutting off too much because you always have the source files as well. And we're going to save those along with our, our working files. All right now, is there stuff on the inside of this I want to get rid of? Well, yes, I think so. Let me see if there's any kind of contained shapes I can steal from other layers. No contained shapes there. You see how they're all open. The only contained shapes here are within the shoe and then the shirt and the teeth. The only contained shapes here is maybe this eye. I want to go ahead and get rid of those eyeballs. So make sure you're on the right layer. That's kind of cool. And then the only contained shapes here is the ear part, this part here. So I'll go ahead and use the magic wand on those. And I'll cut that out. I can hold down shift and add my magic wand selection. So now both of those are selected. I'll turn it off so you can see. And then I can delete that from this layer. I can delete those shapes from this layer. So you can have selections travel between layers. Lots of fun. 
And then when I layer them all up, 